Hey guys, welcome back. Well, this past uh, week or the past couple of days, there's been some talk about the latest elementary OS. I, believe, I saw a, um, I believe there was something on Brian Lunduk's uh, channel here on YouTube uh, with the lead developer, Daniel For, Foray. I hope, I hope I said that right. And there was another interview on um, another channel on YouTube. I can't remember. It may have been Jupiter Broadcasting about elementary OS. So I thought, well, maybe it's time to take a look at this again. It's been a while. So keep in mind that my channel is geared primarily for beginners. Not always. You know, maybe someone who has used Windows a long time and wants to try something in Linux. So is this something for beginners? Well, I'm not really sure. Let's take an unedited look at this. I'm running this inside a virtual machine. I think we'll go through the installation process and then we'll see what the final version or the final product of this looks like after it's been installed. I'm running this uh, Linux Mint will be the host. So let's go ahead and click Install Elementary. Hopefully this will have an automatic installer for beginners. My top three Linux distributions currently for beginners would be, let's see, Ubuntu Mate, uh, Linux Mint Mate, really anything from Linux Mint except Debian, and maybe uh, the latest KDE or the latest Kubuntu 17.04. I will skip uh, these two options here, download updates while installing elementary and third-party software, just to speed things up for now. Okay, so we'll just choose Erase Disk and Install Elementary. Sounds good to me. Right changes to this, sure. This is based, I believe it's based off Ubuntu, so this the installation process should be fairly easy. Uh, the elementary website or the desktop um, has its own uh, desktop interface environment. I believe it's called Pantheon, if I'm not mistaken. And it resembles, I guess, more of um, GNOME or GNOME as far as a desktop environment. Okay, let's type in the relevant information. Just use a simple password. So this is only a test. So we'll let this install. Let's um, take a look here at the elementary, elementary OS website. It is a fast and open replacement for Windows and Mac OS. Now, I, don't, I honestly, with this latest one, I don't know if this is a, <clears throat> I don't know if this is truly a replacement for a Windows PC or a Mac OS system. In the past, I've gotten very uh, suspicious, or not suspicious, but I have had my doubts of whether an operating system based on Linux can fully replace Windows or a Mac OS computer. Now, I know some of you have switched to Linux, which is great. But for myself, from my experience, strictly from my experience, I haven't found anything yet to completely replace uh, my Windows operating system. So the latest thing here, I believe, is with the App Center. Yeah, the Indie Open Source App Store. Uh, App Center delivers native open source apps to elementary OS. Quickly discover new apps and easily update the ones you have, plus support indie developers through pay what you want purchases, which I think is a great idea. Apps you need without the ones you don't. And there's some more uh, information here if you want to check this out. One thing I remember about testing this some time ago is a very clean looking operating system. And um, I don't remember what else I thought about. It's been a while. We'll have to take a look at this again. But if I believe this resembles GNOME or the GNOME desktop. And I'll be honest, it's not currently my favorite desktop environment. But let's go ahead and go through the install process, take a look at the final product, and see what we have. I don't think I will edit this video. So I may wind up pausing it here and there while this goes through the install. If you run only Windows, VirtualBox is one of the best ways to test an operating system, such as something based on Linux, and it doesn't really affect your Windows computer or your Windows partition. Uh, 
Let's take a look at the store here at the website while that's installing. Okay, some cool looking t-shirts. Somebody told me, Toss, I'll buy the Toss t-shirts if, if, they, if they become available. I've been thinking about it, but we'll see. Elementary coffee mug. Go to Developer, Publish in App Center, Support, Installation, Support, Learning the Basics. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so you need a 93 or comparable 64-bit dual core, one gig of RAM, 15 gigabyte, internet access of course choose your current system select the operating system you're currently using to view a tailored and, to, and that's elementary calling me right now i wonder who that could be sounds like a telemarketer This is good. Verify your download. Create an install drive. You net boot. That's what I use. Okay, this looks fairly simple. Yeah, make sure you back up your important important data up to an external drive before you do anything when installing a new operating system, which may overwrite your existing data. Super important. Learning the basics. Panel, applications, indicators, the dock. App windows, window buttons, multitasking. Apps open in app windows. They can overlap your desktop, be moved around. You can switch between windows in several ways. Click on the window, click on the apps icon, press Alt Tab. Hot corners, which I don't use. Workspaces. Multiple displays. Installing apps. Updating. Elementary OS. Includes updates as part of the App Center. Okay, basic stuff here looks all good. I like I like the use of white space and yeah, this looks pretty good. I think what I'll do here is pause the video, and I'll be back. Okay, welcome back. Well, the system has just finished installing. Did not notice any glitches. Let's go ahead and full screen this and see what we have. I will say this about Elementary OS. One of the most cleanest looking desktops you'll ever find in a Linux-based operating system. So, according to the website, this is a replacement at least a possible replacement for Windows and Mac users, is it? Well, let's take a look. Now, I will, I will go through this as best I can through the eyes of a Windows user. Of course, I dual boot between Windows 10 and different versions of Linux. So we have a nice, clean desktop. Very good. Let's go ahead and right-click on this and see what we have. Uh, I guess it's not working. Okay, maybe you cannot right-click on this. Okay, let's keep on moving along. It's like a panel at the top, and the panel appears to be stationary. You can't right-click, remove it, or anything. Now, this might be something to do uh, with the tweaks, such as the GNOME tweaks in Ubuntu GNOME. This may have something similar, a similar setting to that. I don't know. So, at the top right, looks like we have power. Notifications, do not disturb, that's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Bubbles appear in the top, top right hand corner of the display. And this appears. Sounds, notifications. I don't know why, but the bubbles makes me laugh. Well, that's cool. All settings, app center, and so forth. Nah, let's turn that on. Why not? System notifications, volume display, brightness will be unaffected. Okay. Sounds good to me. Let's move along. App Center. Now with this new App Center, if I read this correctly, developers will be able to post their apps and you can pay what you want. Let's go ahead and do that. Now this should run faster in a full install. So if it's running a little bit slow in a virtual environment, that is normal. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's try audio. Looks like a lot of apps are free, at least in this category. Let's install. Oh, what do I like? Okay, let's try Clementine. your password like I said a very clean looking desktop I love the use of white space all over these pages so very nice again this will be an unedited look at elementary OS what you see is what you get Okay, while well, that's downloading, what do we have here? System settings. Personal hardware network administration. Security and privacy. Let's take a look. Do not collect data from the following data sources. Privacy mode. Element elementary OS is in privacy mode. While in privacy mode, this operating system won't retain any further data or statistics about file and application usage. This will not prevent apps from recording their own usage data like browser history. Okay, I like that. Locking, lock on sleep, lock after screen off, and the firewall. Firewall status. Unlock. Will it turn on? There we go. Oh. Okay. Simple enough. Open. Okay, if you've used Clementine before, I'm sure you know that is a great media player. And it looks like closing it off still leaves the icon at the top panel. Activate. Okay. Looks good. Let's move along here. Let's go to Photos. Of course, I just installed this so I don't have any photos. We have some shortcuts here, preferences, library, plugins, watch library, default camera, shot well. Okay, simple enough. Let's move along. Videos. All right, I don't have any videos. Download it. Music. Get some tunes. We would if I did have any here. Calendar. Okay. Looks good. Mail. Epiphany web browser. Is this still being supported? I thought I thought this ended. Um, I thought development for this ended some time ago. I could be wrong. Um Let's go to about. It looks.
looks like this was last updated 2014. Hmm, that's not good, in my opinion. I mean, it's probably still safe to use, but yeah. Anyway, let's move along. Multitasking view. Okay. All right. Looks good. Let's go here. Right click and quit applications. We can switch from different views here. It looks like accessories, graphics, internet, office, sound and video, system tools. Let's go to the terminal. Uh, let's see. Let's try sudo apt get install synaptic. The Synaptic Package Manager, great tool on Ubuntu-based systems to install and delete software. It's probably not something designed for beginners to Linux, but once you get acclimated to how Linux works, Synaptic is awesome. I like the transparency effects on elementary OS. So let's see, I wish I could right click on the desktop and on the panel. I've gotten so used to that with Ubuntu and Linux Mint and other distros. That's one of the things, at least for myself, that's one of the things that is missing from this. But again, this has its own desktop environment called Pantheon, I believe. So it wasn't made for that, but it's just not something that's for me. It looks great, but just not for me. Let's see. I wanted to access access Synaptic, so let's go to Applications. I guess we can search. There we go. I like the default colors, the default fonts for elementary OS. It looks good. And I wear contact lenses usually, so very pleasing to the eyes. Yeah, let's see, this should work. Let's try, oh, Banshee. I won't install, I just want to make sure it works. <clears throat> yep, it's right there. I just realized it's almost, it's almost lunchtime for me. I'm getting hungry, but let's move along here. So let's go to internet. Let's go back here. So far, smooth running in a virtual environment, all things considered. Uh, let's see if it'll play a video. Okay, I'm sure you can hear that. It's playing just fine. Right, let's get out of that. Let's see. Any keyboard shortcuts? So I have volume controls on my keyboard. And hmm, maybe an artifact of the um, of the um, virtual box. But the shortcuts on my keyboard does not appear to be working. So let's see. Uh, it doesn't affect that. Okay. Well, what can I say about this? Um, it looks great. Um, runs pretty good in a virtual box, all things considered. Uh, I figure, well, not I figure, I'm pretty sure if you run this in a full install, you should be fine in terms of performance. I think the idea of having an app center where developers can, you know, post their projects, post their apps, and you can pay what you want to pay, I think is a great idea. Now let's see if we can come across one that you have to pay for. Uh, well, that's free. Let's see. Uh, let's see, let's try, I don't know, graphics. A lot of free ones there. 
Well, this is new, so there may not be a lot of paid apps, at least not yet. That's my guess. Um, perhaps it would have been easier if there was a category for free or paid apps. Uh, I see updates there. Searching for updates. Okay. Let's go back to home. Nimbus, let's try Nimbus. Ah, here we go. So it looks like I'm guessing you can either not pay for it or pay what you want. Let's see if let's see if somebody wanted to try this. Let's try free and see if that'll work. I suppose I'm assuming if you downloaded it and you liked it, you can probably delete it and then re-download it and pay whatever you wanted to pay for. If that works, I think that's fair. Let's go to open. Okay, and very good, there it is. Let's see, can we right click? I guess we can't to change the um, location you know like you can with um oh say with kubuntu with the plasmoid i wonder where the setting for that would be hmm I'm not sure Anyway, it would have been nice to have a right-click option and then change the location. Strictly my opinion, though. Uh, is it down here? Nope. Close. Keep in dock. Let's close it. Maybe. Close. I said close. It won't close. Okay. All right, again, this could just be an artifact of the uh, virtual box. So my final thoughts about this. It looks great. It looks slick, actually. It's, um, I know this is probably a work in progress. It's not quite as, um, for a Windows user, I don't think that this is quite as user friendly as what someone would get used to as something compared to, say, Linux Mint, where you can, you know, right click on the panel, right click on the desktop, for example, here when you add the weather, you know, you can go to preferences, right click and, you know, change the location. Uh, I wish this had an option here, but it does not. Uh, that may be something that may be developed down in the future um, or further in the future rather. But the desktop looks terrific. It's This is not something I would use. I'm so used to running, you know, Linux Mint, Ubuntu and Ubuntu Mate and systems like that, but the operating system, as far as this elementary o OS goes, as far as it looks wise, it feels great. Uh, it looks great, it runs great in a virtual machine. I think it needs a little bit more tweaking to make this truly a replacement for someone who's been so used to running a Windows computer. But uh, it's not too far off in terms of a complete replacement for Windows, in my opinion. That's it. That is my, those are my feelings on Elementary OS. Let me know what you guys think. I will have a link for this below in the show notes. That's it, guys. I'll catch you later. Take care.